Welcome to Muscle and Motivation, episode eight of the podcast. And I'm going to talk to you about stop getting distracted. How to stop getting distracted, how to make sure you reach your goals in your health and fitness journey, in building muscle, how to ensure you reach success when you want to burn fat, build muscle, get jacked, become disciplined, stay consistent, whatever it is your goal is, how do you stop getting distracted? Now I'm going to talk, uh, I'm going to give you an overall, um, overall talk, I'm going to talk to you about story, I'm going to talk to you about how to not get distracted, and I'm also going to teach you and tell you some things that we do inside my elite accountability coaching program that may help you um, get the results you want. So, first off, I don't know if a lot of you know this, back in 2015, I tore, fully tore my quad tendon off the bone, okay, and when I say fully tore it, literally, uh, I had nine operations, three flush outs, um, I was in hospital for a long, 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 long time, and I got told I would never, ever be able to lift, walk, um, I'd maybe have to have a Zimmer frame or some type of stick, that's how severe it was, it wasn't just a tear, or if it was fully torn off, my kneecap had twisted, um, and I've got pictures, and literally the doctor said um, that you probably never do bodybuilding again. Um, and so what happened was, I didn't really take on board what they said, and then 18 months later, I did my a bodybuilding show. Now, it was very easy to use the doctor's words to distract me from what I knew I was destined to do. And I never knew that when this injury happened, how it would have set me up to eventually run free, free successful gyms, run a brand, have great customer service regarding personal training, do 90 personal training a week. And that's what set me up from this, from going from a being told that I'd never walk again and never uh, squat again and never bodybuild again, to then seven years later, running three successful gyms, having pers 90 personal training sessions a week, earning a big income. I never thought that would happen. And it could have been really easy to have got distracted from what the doctor said to me. And his words were clearly, you'll probably walk with a limp, you'll probably have a walking stick or some type of aid to help you, um, and you'll never bodybuild again. So it would have been really easy for me to use those words and to keep them in my head to distract me from what I knew I was meant to be doing. What I knew my calling was to be a bodybuilder, I knew that I wanted to lift weights, I knew that I'd use fitness in some way, shape or form. What I didn't know is that someone upstairs universe, God, whatever you believe in, had a bigger plan for me. And this was just part of the plan. And then I remember opening my first gym. Now, let me just set the tone for this. Let me set the story for this. There's me in a full leg cast, about seven, about 18 stone, having had trained for about six months because of what had happened to me, opening the gym. We just moved into an apartment in Sutton Coalfield. And literally, we bought this gym, kitted it out, no members, nothing at all. And that we had this gym for a year with about eventually about five members. And for a whole year, I remember saying to my wife, Mel, we've done the wrong thing. We've done the wrong thing. We shouldn't have opened a gym. And Mel was like, this is the calling. This is what we should have done. Look, your get, your legs getting stronger. Things are going for you. Um, you're having physio, I went private had physio, your legs getting stronger, the gym's building up. I was like, the gym's not building up. We've got 10 people. I remember five at a time. I remember for six months, we never had one. And I was just paying rent, training, and no one was coming in. And it would have been very easy then to get distracted from the bigger picture, which was have a successful gym. Didn't expect to own free, but that was great. Um, but it would have been really easy to get and lose momentum, lose the clear goal, specific goal, and get distracted by what wasn't working rather than what was. Now, the reason why I set that, because there's two instances where I could have got distracted from what the do doctor said to me about never bodybuilding. I could have distracted by the environment because no one was coming to join my gym. But eventually, I did a bodybuilding show and my legs looked the same. I ran a successful gym, which turned into two, which turned into three gyms, where we had over 600 members in each one, and I was doing 90, day, 90 PTs a week. So what? why did I go from nothing to something? How did that happen? And it's all to do with not getting distracted. 
And I want to talk to you about not getting distracted because guys, on a fitness journey, on a health journey, it is very easy to get distracted. It's very easy to lose hindsight. It's very easy to focus on other things going on in your life rather than your specific goal. And you've got to understand your goal in your health and fitness journey is the thing that is the umbrella for all successes in your life. You may not believe it, but let me let me give you a question. Let me ask you this. If you are not mentally and physically fit, you can't earn money. You can't be bring value to people. You can't become confident. You lose purpose. You get distracted. You can't be fit. Guys, I know laying in the bed when I couldn't move, sweating because of my leg. Once you lose your health and fitness, you lose everything. You literally become a, what's the word, a, a shadow of your former self. And as I lay in Good Hope Hospital with my leg bandaged up in a massive plaster cast, having sweats because I had this virus inside me that you would never ever get but somehow i got it we all got it in our stomach that we're meant to have naturally somehow i got it in my leg and every day i'd go down to the operating theater and they'd cut some more muscle off my leg sew me back up cut some more muscle i remember going down to surgery four times in one week and the nurse said to me we never do this usually because when you wake up usually your body can't take it and i remember waking up not knowing who i was where i was and it's very easy, once you lose your health and fitness, the impact on that can be massive. It doesn't just affect you, it affects your family, it affects your income, it affects everything. And this is why it's so important to put your health and fitness at the top, the umbrella of everything around you. Because if you don't, you will soon realize and it'll be taken away. It's that simple. If you're 40 or over, if you're getting older, or you're realizing more and more, guess what? One day, if I'm not healthy and fit, if 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 if, if I'm not at the best of my game with my health and fitness, you'll, you'll know about it. And I remember sitting in a bed, I was in quarantine, and I, I could tell the pit, I could tell you a massive story about it. But just because I'd come back from Thailand, they put me in quarantine. So I was in quarantine in Good Hope Hospital with a room to myself. Everyone that came in came in hazmat suits and madness like that. And I remember sitting there sweating the bed because I had this thing called CMP, which is a bacteria that lives in uh, stomachs, but somehow I got it in my knee. Um, and so then I had to have, the, I was in months in hospital, having operations, not finding, getting antibiotics made up and all this thing. And I sat, sat there every night by myself think i'll never get better and once you're at that rock bottom you realize how important your health and strength was and you want to know one of the, one of the number one thing that got me thinking to get back on track tyson mike tyson of all the people mike tyson had brought out his autobiography and my missus bought it and this so this was happening over Christmas period. We, I flew back on the 28th of November. I was in hospital by the uh, 8th of December. I did it in Thailand, but I came back thinking I was fine because I had everything out there done, but I wasn't. So then I was back in hospital on the 8th of December and I was there over Christmas, over Jan. And I started, I got bought the Mike Tyson book and I started reading the Mike Tyson book. And that is the only thing that clicked that got me back into mentally first of all mentally getting prepared to come back and while i was going through hospital while i was going through um operations while i was having flipping at a hick line if you don't know a hick line is a line that goes still got scars here where it goes in there and goes to the top inside a vein to the top of your heart where they were pumping antibiotics in to try and keep this um infection from spreading and it weren't for Mike Tyson's autobiography book, which was about mental health. If you know his story, if you don't know his story, he went through loads of mental health issues and blah, 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 blah. If he wasn't have reading his book and understanding the power of the mind, I probably wouldn't have been here today. I probably would have given all up. I probably would never own, own gyms. But it all started here. It all started with your mindset. And it was so easy from that happening 
to then having no members in my gym for six months to a year. It would have been so easy to get distracted. And I want to talk to you about how not to get distracted because guys, more than ever now, it's easy to get distracted. More than ever now, it's easy to lose hindsight of why you're on a health and fitness journey. And it's more than easy now to let your health and fitness journey go and focus on making money, focus on providing, focus on all these sort of things. But if your health and fitness goes, everything goes. And that's one of the things that I want you to take away. If you haven't got your health and fitness, you haven't got anything. You literally haven't got anything. So how do you become less distractive? Less distracted, sorry. You've got to set number one, clear and specific, specific micro, what is it, micro something and macro, I can't remember the word, the middle one is, but you've got to set small, medium and large goals, okay? Small, medium and large goals. In business we call it micro, I think it's meso, I can't remember, and then macro goals, okay? Small goals are your daily goals, medium goals are your weekly goals, large goals are your monthly goals. If you want to do it in business terms, small goals are three months, medium is a year, macro is five years. But you've got to set small, clear, specific goals. Because if you don't, literally, you, you're aiming for nothing. You're fucking pissing in the wind, you're firing blanks, mind the pun, pun and you don't know where your direction is that you are going. So you've got to set clear, and specific goals. Define your goal. I want to lose two pounds this week. Define your goal. I'm going to hit the gym three times this week. Define your goal. I'm going to wake up at 5 a.m. this week. Define your goal. I'm going to eat three healthy meals this week. Define your goal. I'm going to ensure that at the end of the day, I've ticked off my five key performance actions inside that group. Okay? Vague objectives lead to vague results. We've all heard the thing called smart, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time bound. Break it all down into small, manageable goals on a day to day basis. Set weekly goals, set monthly goals. But if you don't want to get distracted, set clear, specific goals, write them down, assign deadlines, review them. Write them down, assign deadlines, review them. If I showed you my journal at the end of the day, written down from the beginning, deadline by the end of the day, review them. You've got to start, if you don't want to get distracted, you've got to start setting specific goals for your day, week and month. That's number one. Number two, remove distractions from your environment. Okay, I turn my notifications off. When, if I, when I'm with my family from four till seven, I turn my notifications off. I don't keep my phone around me. We've just been out to the walk. We're very lucky we live near a nature park um, with ducks and fishing and big forest thingy and stuff like that. And we've just been down there, left my phone at home. Why? Because I want to be in the moment. If you're waking up in the morning and you're going to the gym, leave your phone at home or put it on silent. Okay? Turn off not notifications. Start becoming less distracted by eliminating distractions. Setting boundaries with yourself. I'm not going to work at this time between this time. If I'm at work, when I get home, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get up at 5 a.m. And from 5 till 6 a.m., it's my time in the gym. Okay? A lot of you know that I use the Pomodoro technique, which is this bad boy here. And I set minutes and I set hours. So I was saying, right, for 10 minutes, or let's say for 20 minutes, 20 minutes, and for 20 minutes, I deep work, do deep work, journaling. I read my 10 pages of the day. I listen to my audio books. And then I do it. When I'm in work, I set an hour, 60 minutes, client retention, making sure all clients are happy. You've got to do what needs to be done in regards to getting, uh, eliminating distractions. Okay? Eliminating distractions. So how do you do that? Set time aside for yourself. I'm a 5 a.m. So it used to be a 4 a.m. I'm a 5 a.m. riser. I make sure I designate that time for me. Okay, I use apps and tools. This Pomodoro theory. 
I uh, use a journal book. Let me just turn this off because it keeps buzzing. And also I schedule in. Guys, if you're in my program, you know how much I flip in, use a, a uh, spreadsheet, Excel, and everything's time zone down. Yes, some of you probably travel, some of you do things, but you can still have a blueprint for being at home, a blueprint for being at work, food-wise, workout-wise, uh, journaling, reading books, podcasts. Okay, that leads on to number three, developing a strong routine and discipline. If you don't want to get distracted and you want to win your game in fitness, and in fitness is the most important thing because it can over, you can undo everything. If you haven't got your health and fitness, you need number three, a strong routine paired with discipline. A strong routine creates consistency and builds discipline. How do you create discipline? How do you create a strong routine? For me personally, as you know, it begins the moment my eyes wake up. Your get up is your fucking setup. And I keep telling you, and I keep pounding it into you. Your get up is your fucking setup. How you get up and how you start the day is how it ends. And so you've got to start getting up in a morning routine, setting positive boundaries, setting the tone for the day. How do you do that? If you're going to get up at 6 a.m., get up at 6 a.m., drink 500 ml of water, get inside the gym, set yourself up mentally and physically. You gotta start doing things that set you up for the day. Prioritize tasks straight away. What's your goal for the day? Coming back to number one, prioritize the list. Your priority should be every morning filling up your own cup. I've just done a reel about it on my Instagram. Filling up your own cup. You wanna know why most people get anxious and depressed about the day? because they don't put themselves first. They don't take any action. Action overcomes anxiety. Put yourself first, set yourself up for the day. If you know you've got a meeting at eight o'clock, get to the gym at 5 a.m. Start planning, setting goals, becoming um, disciplined, but most of all, a routine. You can have a routine in reminding yourself of your goal. If you were coming to my little room now, you'd see mine and my wife's goals for the year. And we're on a timeline. So I'm, re I'm constantly reminded of what the aim is, where we're heading to, what we're doing it for. That's me disciplined. Because I read it every day. I see it every day. I know why I'm doing this. I know why I'm on flipping my social medias all the time. I know I'm, why I'm working online all the time. I know what I'm doing because I'm heading in the direction. And to do that, I've got to be disciplined. So you've got to develop a morning routine, creating a daily schedule, developing a morning routine, regularly reflecting. Reflection is a discipline. Reviewing and reflecting is a discipline. Reviewing the day, the week, the month. What worked great last week? What didn't work good last week? What didn't work good last month? Looking at your results of the month, of the day, of the week, and reviewing it and going, this worked, this didn't work, that's rubbish, get rid of it. I can't do that. Constantly reviewing how your week's going, your day's going, your month's not go, going. It's not a negative to look back and go, that was shit, that didn't work. It's not a negative, you're just reviewing it. But the majority of people who are successful develop a morning routine. So there we have it. Three ways to not get distracted. I'm going to conclude and go over them. Number one, set clear specific goals. Write down your main goal. Micro, macro, and one in the medium, small, medium, large. Assign a deadline. Review and adjust your goals regularly. Have a reminder on your phone. Have a reminder on your laptop screen. Have a reminder in your car. Eliminate distractions. Remove distractions. Making sure your morning routine, that's to fill your cup up, is not distracted. Set your phone aside. Do what needs to be done. I'll use a Pomodoro technique. Look into techniques and tools that can help you not get distracted. Develop a strong routine and discipline. No need to go over it because you know what routine and discipline you need. And I'm going to give you the last one, which is not on my list. I'm going to give you a last one. If you don't want to get distracted in your health and fitness journey, and I've used a bit of a 
a scaremongering thing, if I'm honest with you, because let's be real, you probably could have a great life without health and fitness. Okay, you probably plod along, great, yeah, cool, I'm still making money and blah, 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 blah. But if you want to be at the top of your game, if you want to be, if you want to be your optimal best, okay, if you want to be at your best, you got to have a strong enough purpose. Most people who are successful, coming back to the Mike Tyson bike, um, Mike Tyson book, if you've ever read it, it's a great book. He's a bit weird, but he's got some great pointers. And one of his pointers is this. Well, one of the things I took away was this. He never wanted to go back to the ghetto. And I say ghetto, he lived at home with his mum. And he used to bike ride to the boxing place where his trainer was that he had for many years. And he never wanted to go and be like the other or the boys. His purpose was to be different. And that was strong enough to make him to become one of the best boxers in the world, one of the most well-known boxers in the world. And look at him now, he's still making money now. The biggest way to create purpose, the biggest way to not get distracted, the biggest way to ensure you're on the right path to success in your fitness and health journey is controlling this. Okay, get back into this. You need to control this. And in order to control this, okay, it takes affirmations, it takes self-development, it takes journaling, it takes listening to positive affirmations, self-development, podcasts, it takes surrounding yourself with people that want to see you win, it takes self-actualization of where you are and where you want to be, it takes honesty, but one of the biggest ways is creating a purpose so strong that nothing distracts you. Okay, when I sat in the gym by myself with no members, my purpose was to run a successful gym and nothing was going to stop me. Even though I doubted it sometimes, even though I moaned about it sometimes, and even though it was cold and it was boring and I whined like a bitch sometimes, I still had a purpose to be a successful gym owner. And eventually I was. But my purpose was so strong that no one was going to wave with me. No one was going to get in the way. And you need, in your health and fitness journey, a purpose so strong, it's a reason why you get up in the morning and go to the gym. It's a reason why you want to eat healthy and clean. My purpose now is my, my family. And you need to find out what your purpose is. And the reason why I mentioned about how Fitness is the umbrella because for some of you, if you don't have your fitness, you don't have your business. If you don't have your business, you don't have an income. If you don't have an income, you lose money. And that could be the life or death of some people. I don't know. But you've got to find your purpose into why you do your fitness journey, into why you wake up and do the discipline, into why you are getting healthier, getting stronger, getting fitter. Because otherwise what will happen is like many people, they'll rely on motivation, and when that dries up, you got nothing. And sometimes your purpose isn't to get strong and healthy and fitter. You put well, that's probably one of the purposes, but it's probably not strong enough. So then look beyond that. What does getting healthier and fitter and stronger do for you and your business? Do for you and your family? What does it do for you personally? Does it build confidence? Does it make you a better talker? Does it make you a better mum and dad? Does it make you a more energetic person? Does it make you a better lover at home in the bedroom? Who knows? But you've got to find your purpose. Guys, appreciate you all. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Thank you. And I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.